Welcome back to Monster Tamer, a 2D Pokemon-like RPG created Phaser 3. Previously, we worked on updating our battle menu and our battle scene to handle player input. Then that way, as the player selects different menu options, we'll display different text. And then that way, if a player chooses an attack, we'll display that the enemy, the player is attacking the enemy. If you missed the previous videos, there will be links in the video description to the source code up to this point, as well as the complete source code for this video. There will also be a link to the previous videos if you'd like to catch up. So let's get started. All right, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to work on doing some code optimization. And we're going to do that by updating our battle scene to move some of our logic into its own components. Uh, so currently, our battle scene is responsible for orchestrating everything related to our battle scene. And we're creating our background game objects. We're creating our monster and enemy game objects. Uh, we're creating our battle menu. Uh, we'll have a state machine for toggling what is happening during the battle. And so the code is going to get very complex and it could get very large if we keep all of our code in this file. Uh, so what we're going to do is similar to our battle menu, we're going to take some of our components that make sense to break out and we'll create new classes to handle uh, that logic. Uh, so as an example, uh, we're going to move our game object code that's tied to our health components to its own class. And then that way we can abstract away the logic for uh, when we take away take damage. Uh, when we want to animate the health bar when damage is taken, uh, we'll move our background logic to its own component so we can toggle the background uh, so we can have random uh, images based on where the player enters the battle from. Uh, and then we'll have our own monster components so then that way we can abstract away things like where the game object appears, uh, which animations are supported, so like uh, taking damage, death animation, things of that nature. Uh, so to get started, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and create a component for our background. Uh, so to do that, we will go ahead and create a new file. Uh, so if we come over to our source code, uh, let's go into our battle. And then under our battle, we'll make a new file. And we're going to call this background.js. And inside here, we'll go ahead and export out a class. And we'll call this background. And so for our constructor, we'll expect our phaser scene. And then we'll go ahead and update our scene, our private property to be equal to scene. Uh, so similar to how we've been doing some of our other classes. Uh, so let's go ahead and copy our private property in our type. We'll paste that. And then we're going to go ahead and copy our JS config for our constructor. All right, so then inside here, uh, we'll go ahead and create our background game object. So to keep track of that, we'll add a new property and we'll just do background game object. And let's just copy this, paste that, and we'll do a phaser game objects dot image. And let's go ahead and copy over our import. So we have phaser and there we go. So now if we come back to our battle scene, let's go ahead and grab our code for where we create our image game object. Uh, so we'll copy this logic here. And in our constructor, we'll go ahead and set that to our property. And so instead of this.add, it will be this scene add. And then we just need to go ahead and import in our battle background asset keys. And then finally, what we're going to do is we're just going to add a method uh, for showing our forest background. Uh, so what we'll do is we're going to do show forest. And we'll just do this background game object dot set texture. And we'll do our battle background asset keys and we'll do forest. And then we're going to go ahead and update our alpha. We'll set it to one. And then what we'll do is in our constructor, uh, after we do our set origin, we're going to set our alpha to zero. All right, so what we're doing here is we're creating an initial image game object. We're setting the alpha to zero so that way it's not visible. And we're just using a default uh, for the forest background. But later on, um, as our game evolves, we might want other backgrounds like maybe just uh, a grassy plain, mountains, a cave, uh, things like that. And what we can do is we'll expose a public method to go ahead and show that type of background. And so instead of creating multiple game objects for when we want to do this, we can just reuse our one game object and use set texture to go ahead and update the 
image texture that's applied to our game object. And then that way we can just reuse that game object and just dynamically change our background. Uh, so if we want to go ahead and test our class, what we'll do is we're going to come back to our uh, battle scene and let's go ahead and create an instance of our background. And so what we'll do is we'll just do const background will be equal to a new background. And we're going to pass in this for our context. And then we'll call it background.showForest. And if we go ahead and remove this code here and save, oh, it looks like there's an issue. Uh, yes, with our imports, we just need to make sure we have our .js. And let's just go ahead and move this down below phaser. We'll go ahead and save. All right, and our game refreshes and everything uh, looks the same as before. All right, so now that we have our background component, we're going to go ahead and focus on our health component. Uh, so what we're going to do is we'll come back to our uh, source code uh, in our folders. We'll do source battle under UI. Uh, we're going to add a new file and we're going to call this healthbar.js. What we'll do is we're going to go ahead and let's grab a reference to our phaser library and we'll export out our class healthbar. So we'll go ahead and add in our constructor. We'll expect scene X and Y. And then what we'll do is we're going to do this dot scene. So we'll have a new private property be equal to scene. And then what we'll do is we'll go ahead and add in that property. Uh, so if we go into our background, we're just going to copy our logic. Go ahead and paste that here. And we'll go ahead and update our constructor. Paste that here. And then what we'll do is we'll just go ahead and add in our param. And we'll expect a number for X and param. We'll have a number, same for Y. Go ahead and update our import. So then next, what we're going to do is we're going to come back to our battle scene and we're going to start moving our code over that's tied to our health bar. So for our health bar, we currently have this create health bar method down here. And so what we're going to do is we're just going to copy this whole block of code here. Let's move that over to our health bar class go ahead and paste that and what we'll do is we're going to go ahead and we're not going to return anything instead we're going to go ahead and create our health bar container uh, inside our constructor and we'll position it based on our x y values that are provided uh, so we'll add a new private property we're going to do health bar container we'll set that equal to this our scene add container we'll do x y and we'll have an empty array for our child game objects we'll add in our new property and let's just go add in our type so we will have a phaser game objects dot container and then what we'll do is let's go ahead and fix our import and we're going to update our method name so create health bar images and we will call that method in our constructor. And we'll go ahead and pass in our X and Y. And then we just need to change our logic. So we'll have this dot add. We'll have this scene dot add. Let's go ahead and just copy that. And we don't need to return anything. Instead, what we want to do is go ahead and add these to our container. So we'll do this dot add. We'll do this health bar container, add, and we'll do our left cap, middle, and our right cap. And we'll go ahead and get rid of our trend statement. So the next thing we're going to do is we have a few values that we're going to go ahead and abstract out and add as properties to our class. And then that way they're not buried within our create health bar images uh, component here. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to add a property for our scale Y and a property for how wide, how our display width, uh, so how big we want our health bar to be. So what we'll do is we'll come to our constructor and we're just going to do this. We'll do full width as our new property name. We'll set that equal to 360. And then what we'll do is we'll do this. We're going to do scale Y. And we're going to set that equal to 0 0.7. And now we'll go ahead and create our properties. And we'll just define those. We'll have scale Y. 
and we'll go ahead and just copy our types real quick and these will both just be numbers uh, so we'll change our type and then what we'll do is we'll come down here let's get rid of scale y and in our logic we're going to do this dot scale y and then we'll go ahead and apply that to each of these So then what we're going to do is we'll come back to our battle scene and let's go ahead and update our reference to our health bar uh, component. So instead of doing this dot create health bar, we're going to do a new health bar and we'll do 34, 34, and we need to go ahead and pass in our scene. And then what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to get our reference to our container game object. So let's just copy this. We'll come up to our player monster and we'll do the same thing here. And then what we need to go ahead and do is return our health bar container. Uh, so to do that, we're just going to add a new getter. So we're going to do get container. And we'll just do return this dot health bar container. So we'll return a reference to it. And then that way in our battle scene, we can just reference our container property and we'll reference our container property. We'll go ahead and clean up our imports. All right, and so what should happen is our scene should refresh. We should still have our health bars uh, and everything should still function the same. So the next thing we're gonna focus on is now we're gonna add in logic to actually animate our health bars. And so to do that, we're gonna have to expose a public method that will allow us to update the width of our health bar and we're going to do that based on a percent uh, so it's going to be based on our property we added so our full width so if we're at 100 percent then our health bar will be 360 pixels versus if we're at 50 percent then it would only be 180 pixels and so to do that we're going to go ahead and create a few new methods so the first one we're going to do is we'll make a private method and we're going to call this set meter percentage and what we'll do is we're going to expect one argument. So we'll have one parameter for our method. So we're going to do percent, and we'll set it equal to one. It's kind of a default value. So if we don't provide anything, we'll set it to 100%. And then we'll need to calculate our width. So we're going to do width will be equal to this full width, so our 360 pixels. And then we're going to times that by that percent value that we provided. Uh, so if we provide 0 0.5, this is how we could update it to be 50%. So once we have our updated width, then what we need to do is actually update our middle image game object with that display width. And for us to be able to do that, we're going to go ahead, we're going to have to add properties to keep track of these image game objects. So what we're going to do real quick is we're going to come up to our properties and we're just going to go ahead and add those. So we're going to go ahead and add in middle, left cap, and right cap. And we're just going to go ahead and change the order just so they're in order. And this is going to be a image game object. So we'll go ahead and update our JS doc type. And we're just going to apply that to each of these. Then what we'll do is we'll come down to our method and we'll do this left cap, this middle, and we're just going to copy this logic down to here. And this will be this middle. And then we need to do this right cap. So then we just need to update our references. So we have our left cap, left cap, middle, middle. And then we pass in each of our image game objects to our container. All right, and so what we need to do is down in our set meter percentage, we're going to change this from 360 to our new calculated width. And then what we'll have to do is we're going to have to update our right cap's position based on that value. Uh, so originally in our code, what we would do is we'd update our middle display width, and then our right cap would be positioned based on that value uh, here. So what we're going to do is we're going to just do this, our right cap, we'll do our X value, and we're going to set it to this middle value dot x plus this dot middle dot display width. Uh, so similar like we did to here when we set the original position. 
And then what we're going to do is just to fix our health bars, we're just going to go ahead and call this private method uh, right after we create our instance. So in our constructor, and we're going to go ahead and set it to one. We'll go ahead and save. And now our health bars are back and they are the proper width. All right, so that actually brings this video to an end. In our next video, what we're gonna do is we're gonna work on refactoring uh, some of our logic tied to our health component. And then we're gonna start adding in new functionality so then that way we can actually animate it and update it when the player takes damage. Uh, so as a reminder, there's a link in the description of the video to the complete source code for this video. And as always, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the content. If you did enjoy the video, please consider liking the video and hitting the bell icon to be notified when the next video in the series is released. For more great Phaser 3 content, please see some of the links on your screen now.